nos van a hablar de Mixpanel, una de las, probablemente una de las mejores herramientas para tener analítica de marketing y analítica de conducta de usuarios. ¿vale? Y tenemos a Argenis Ferrer y a Gina Bradstar. Un aplauso fuerte, por favor. Special thanks. Uh, Gina is coming from Ireland. Is that right? Uh, and Argenis, you are in Barcelona. They are uh, both from this panel, but they are coming here for free and spending their time uh, with us. So, a really special thank you. Hola. Lo siento, pero vamos a hablar en inglés. <laughs> <laughs> The last Mac. No. Oh. It's a problem. Yeah, it's Technology. Perfect. Okay. We got yep. it. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having us. We're very excited to be here. I am originally from San Francisco, and I moved to our London office about six months ago. And our Hennis is um, originally from Venezuela, but living in, our, in Barcelona as a remote uh, support engineer. And today we are here to talk to you about the importance of planning. So um, a lot of us have sort of analytics tools or other tools that you implement with, you know, if you were sold or you, if you were part of the sales process, you were probably told it would solve all of your problems and be able to, you know, work exactly how you expect it to. Um, as we know, that's not always the case, and it's very important to put a lot of emphasis into the planning process in the beginning. Um, so hello today. Everyone can hear me, right? Yep, perfectly. Um, so I'm going to start by telling you what makes panel is. Um, can you let me know if you're, um, any of you or most of you are aware of makes panel? Show of hands, stand ovation? No? <laughs> okay. So I really wanted uh, at least some people here to understand Mixpanel because that's going to make our jobs easier today. But um, Mixpanel is a products analytics company, uh, and our main motto is to help the world, world learn from its data. At its core, it's just allow you as product people to better understand what users are doing within your product. Um, our ma main headquarters are based out of San Francisco, but as Jana mentioned, we recently opened a London office to be able to cater to our European customers. Oh, I thought we had this, this one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's go back. All right, let's go back. And that's the next one. Next one, okay. Um, <clears throat> so just our goals for today, um, they're really twofold. So one is to stress the importance of planning why it's worth putting the time and energy into getting it right from the start. Uh, especially my job as a customer success manager, I am in charge of making sure that our customers um, are seeing the value in our tool and they're able to get answers to their analytics questions based on how they have implemented Mixpanel. Um, so, so really it comes down to the initial implementation and how important that is. And then secondly, uh, we want to emphasize ingraining that into your company culture. So. It's not just a one-time implement it and then kind of forget about it. It's an iterative process that you need to revisit um, in an ongoing basis across many different teams within your company. So we wanted to start the presentation with a few concepts. And before we go into the first one, I wanted to show you this illustration. Um, this is from a movie called Interstellar. Uh, hopefully, a lot of you have seen it. Uh, this is kind of a scene where we have Matthew McConaughey, and he's in this kind of fourth dimensional place where we have our three dimensions, but we also have time as a dimension itself. So he can walk uh, forward to go into time into the future. He can walk backwards and look at the different scenes in his life. So he can see where he is at that point and all of the scenes that drove, drove him into that point in time, like all of the consequences and actions that led him to the point that he's in. Um, I wanted to start with that because the first concept that we want to discuss is to work your way backwards from the goal. 
Um, the idea is that whenever you're starting your implementation, your analytics implementation, you want to see yourself where you want to end up, why you were implementing an analytics strategy, and then work yourself backwards. So we have this goal for to be able to measure whether we are succeeding or not. We need to have these metrics. And then to be able to get the metrics, what kind of data do we need? What kind of events and properties do we need to track to be able to measure that? Yeah, and the second concept here is again just around the vitality of planning. So um, it's very easy for people to initially set up Mixpanel or any analytics tool and just say, I want to track everything. I want to be able to get all of the data. I want all the actions that my users are doing, and then I'll figure it out from there with a lot of, you know, slicing and dicing and, and deep diving that takes weeks on end. Um, and that's not necessarily the best way to go about implementing a tool like Mixpanel. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in the data when you have too much of it. So we want to emphasize being very intentional about specific events that lead to a goal that you're trying to track. Um, so we're, we're firm believers that a good plan leads to good data. And you want to make sure that everything that you're tracking has a business goal that it's tied to. So whether that's, um, and we'll get into this a little bit later about the different the different goals, but really what does that event help you measure? Definitely. Um, the other one that I wanted to point out was to measure <laughs> and plan again. Um, you will see in, the, in all businesses, and but especially in startups, that the business is going to evolve and very rapidly sometimes. So even if we have two companies with very similar product, we could have, for example, Amazon as an e-commerce side, or we could have my little hipster store uh, as a second one. Even if they have an e-commerce side, both of their analytics implementations are often going to be wildly different. And the reason is that you always want to focus on what your current business goal is at that specific point in time for the life cycle of the product itself. So if we have this little company that's starting over and um, that's starting right now, you are mostly usually focusing on user acquisition. You want all of your users measure how many of them you're getting through the funnel, how many of them you're getting to actually end up using your product, and you don't focus as much as in user retention. Whereas if you're Amazon, for example, you have been in the market for such a long time now that you have a well-established user base, so you want to just focus on keeping those users that you already have, uh, keeping them from churning and possibly upsell them, so sell more stuff to them. Um, so you really need to focus on what's really useful for you right at this moment, focus on getting those metrics and then go from there. Cool, so this is a pretty basic uh, planning framework that we wanted to start with here. So you have your amazing app at the top, um, and then you can see the three goals broken out um, that we're trying to focus on right now. So the first one is acquiring users, second is engaging with those users, and the third is retaining them. Um, and then from there, you break down what events you need to be able to track that lead to those goals. So within acquiring users, what do users need to do? They need to sign up, they need to log in, they need to finish the onboarding or welcome tutorial, um, et cetera. And then you can see beneath each of those events, there's a list of properties or descriptors or details about that event um, that help enrich you know, what device the user was on, what country they came from, et cetera. And then at the top here is um, another planning framework as well. You can see you have the events in the first column on the left, uh, the KPI that that event is tied to, or business goal. For instance, the first one, app open, is tied to the new user registration. Um, and then you also want to keep track of how that event is triggered. So say someone who implemented Mixpanel is no longer with your company. Who else knows what they did and what events are being sent and how they're being sent? So we, we always recommend having a living document, usually Google Sheets or something that you can um, share around the team that has the most recent events and properties that you're tracking, along with what, uh, what business goals those are tied to. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. And although we're, of course, mentioning Mixpanel uh, a few times here, we're trying to get these uh, concepts at a high level, so it applies to your analytics implementation, whatever analytics tool you end up using, Mixpanel. Yeah, and, <laughs> and just one more tip on that okay. I forgot to mention. Um, so 
one thing that we see a lot of customers do that ends up hurting them is if someone else implemented it, and then you know now you're in charge of the implementation, you want to make sure that you have a consistent naming convention. So you don't want to have an app open with a capital A and then an app open with a lowercase a. Say they're sent to your project in different parts of the code and the numbers aren't matching. Now the entire team that's using Mixpanel doesn't know which event to use and it makes the project um, just not trustworthy. And that's really, you know, that's, that then significantly decreases the value of even paying for a tool like Mixpanel. So it's, it's very critical to get these details right. Um, and we do have in our help docs some industry specific spec docs uh, similar to the screenshot above here that you can use as a starting point. So they'll have you know, some, some standard e-commerce, for example, business goals, some events that you might want to consider tracking uh, based on the life cycle that you're in. Cool, so um, I've mentioned this a little bit already, but somebody needs to own the process. So it can actually be a really great way to further your career if you are interested in analytics at all, um, whether from product or marketing, to be the one that understands the mixed panel implementation. It's a really great way because so many people from across the company, from various functions and teams, will come to you to understand how do they get answers to their questions, um, you know, how are events sent to the project, et cetera. Uh, so somebody does need to own it and continue to own it as new events are added um, in the future. The second key for success that we have is to start <laughs> small and use properties. Um, I think this is a common theme that we have been talking about now, but um, the base idea is that at the core of it, tracking information is actually easy. Uh, once you install the library, track in whether we have a new button, we want to track that button, it's really easy, just one code of line. But um, we really need to be mindful and have the intent of only tracking data when it actually leads to a goal that we have to find. So um, if you end up just tracking information just uh, because you can, just because usually the more data that you have is the better, um, it, that is not necessarily a case because you always need to remind yourself that you have a team that needs to see this information across all of the organization. They need to understand why that information is there. So it's always key to step back whenever you want to track something. You, ask, you have to ask yourself, is this helping me solve one of my business questions that I initially set out to answer? Yep. And the third key to success here that we recommend is um, a couple options for when you are actually starting to build out your spec talk. So how do I figure out what I need to be tracking, what my business goals are, et cetera. Um, we have a, we call them pirate metrics. I don't know if you guys have heard of this because it sounds like a pirate making the R sound. Um, but A-A-R-R-R, -R -R -R, yeah. So acquisition, activation, retention, uh, revenue, and then referrals. So you can think about each of these phases. What are the goals that you're trying to get? Is it, do you want a specific number of new users that you acquire? Is it a specific percentage increase quarter over quarter? And then moving on to activation, et cetera. You can have goals for each of these, um, these five, five metric areas. And we have a link here that we can send out after that kind of helps you think through that. The second one is to ask a question about a user behavior um, or a user flow that you're really trying to understand. So what are the key points within that flow that you want to make sure that you have the right tracking for to be able to get the information that you need and better understand it? Definitely. And the last one that we want to mention is identity management. So. One of the things that we um, have to think about today is that users like to have options and we love to provide options to them. The only thing is that that end up having a lot of bringing a lot of complexity into the business model because now users can buy through the website, they can buy through their mobile phone, there can, that can be a mobile app, they can buy within the store itself and we need to figure out how to go from one to the other. Um, one example that I wanted to give you that might or might not be from real life is that, uh, for example, I could be here today in the conference uh, looking at a website, adding a few items to my shopping cart. Um, I might get distracted or forget about just finishing the purchasing process. 
and then uh, I just might go home, get re-engaged due to an email that you sent because you want me to go through the process um, and end up in my laptop uh, checking out while my wife stares at the computer and lets me know whether those are not awful shoes that I'm buying. <laughs> so the idea here is that uh, we need to think of the funnel itself and that at different parts in the process, it could be the same person, but just interacting with different parts of your um, of your product, and you need to be mindful about tracking the identity of that person through that. Um, I know that privacy right now, it's a really hot topic, especially with GDPR that comes online on May the 25th, I believe. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we need to track a specific personal information each, in each step of the way. We don't need to really save the email of a person or their um, credit card in each one of the steps. It could be only down to, for example, a hash that uniquely identifies who that person is to make sure that that user did complete the funnel and that they did not uh, fall through at some point in time. So we have accurate measures of whether we're completing or the users are completing that flow. Yeah, <clears throat> identity management is probably one of the biggest things that we see um, as a mistake and being on our support team for so many years, I'm sure you've seen plenty of cases of that, but it is one of the more critical things that you want to get right and should the sign up process ever change, you always want to make sure that your mix panel tracking um, reflects that. Yeah, and it's definitely important to have it right because it repercutes in so many of your metrics. Um, when you have identity management, it's not really done right. It repercutes in your funnels, it repercutes in retention, so you don't know if users have really churned or you just you're, they're just in a different device and you didn't notice. So it's really important to get right. Great, so um, we're gonna finish here with a customer story. So Easy Park is one of my customers. They are a uh, parking app based out of Stockholm and they help users find parking spots in the city. Um, when they initially signed up with Mixpanel, they implemented on their own. They started basically tracking everything. Um, you can see they had data everywhere in GA, Facebook ad manager, AdWords, they kind of didn't have any, any single source of truth across all of their different tools. Um, and they eventually got to a point where their project was pretty much unusable because they didn't know which events were what, they didn't know how they were being sent to the project. Um, of course, the team that initially implemented years ago is no longer there, and they didn't have any form of offline event uh, spec doc where they had all this information stored. So um, we worked with them on a re-implementation, so basically starting from the beginning and figuring out what this quarter are the business goals that you're focused on, what are the events that we need to be tracking to be able to narrow that scope and quickly get answers across your company to the questions that you're asking um, within your analytics project. Uh, and then we ended up getting them to a point where they are now importing data from their other tools into their mixed panel project, and it is the single source of truth. Um, we've done several trainings with them to make sure that the team is understanding what is available to them in the project as well, and we have a key champion that really owns the mixed panel project and the implementation there, um, and helps with bringing new users on board as well. So it's a really great uh, story of, even though they didn't start initially, they were able to find the time and resources to restart and uh, make Mixpanel worth their time. And it's now one of the more wider use tools at, at Easy Park. Yeah, uh, I was telling Jenna, it's really great when you can actually hear um, a customer saying that more than them just using your product, that they actually consider uh, you to be their partner in whatever venture they're in. So you really want to focus on getting to that point where you establish a user rel uh, relation with your customer where it's an important part of what they do. So um, this is, we are arriving, yep, uh, so we have my minutes, but we're just arriving to summarizing what we have discussed here today. Um, the first one was to train your team to always think of measurement along with goals, not as an afterthought. And this comes to basically the idea of this needs to be almost like muscle memory. Anytime you want to try to review data, you want to track a new event in your implementation, you need to make sure that that aligns to business goals that you have. If you still want to track uh, something that's not really declaring your business goals, then you need to step back and measure whether your goals then have changed so you can restructure the whole tracking plan. 
Secondly, use a living planning doc, um, make it accessible across the company, but have somebody own it. So if there is any new events that want to be tracked, make sure that they're aware of the naming convention and the standardized way to do so um, across the company. Yep. And the final one is um, get into a habit of holding cross-functional quarterly metrics reviews to realize tracking for the latest goals and needs. Um, I'm not sure where this quote comes from, but it's basically that change is constant. You need to embrace it. Um, and the idea is that as your business goals are going to change, you need to make a habit of having quarterly meetings, making sure that the metrics that you're already tracking align to the goals that you need at that point. And to have this uh, be cross-functional for everyone to be at the table and have a say in order um, so you can actually see if there are things that need to be adjusted that you didn't really you weren't aware of. And uh, we wanted to leave you with a final quote, which is, building a product people love is about measurement, not intuition. Um, our co-founder had um, this quote where he said that if you're in a business and you made the right decision without actually having data, you just got lucky. So we need to make sure we don't get lucky. We made the right decisions based on hard data that we've collected. Awesome. And that's it for us. Thank it. you so much. Thanks a lot. Really nice presentation. A lot of information. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Hi, thanks so much for the talk. This is really interesting. I had a quick question about a similar case to what you mentioned with Easy Park. Uh, so we're at a point where we had a mixed panel implementation that's being more or less maintained. Uh, but we're getting to the point where it's not really right for the stage that we're at now, and we're in that position of reconsidering our whole uh, implementation that we currently did. What are some tips you can give in terms of, you know, because if there's some point where the data that you had previously is no longer valid because, or the format that you had, how do you prepare that restructuring? Uh, and just basically any tips would be great. Yeah, Thanks. no, great question. Um, so typically what we do is we have our customers pull a reverse spec, which you can do within your project to see what you currently have in there from events and properties. Um, you can also then see what events are actually being queried. So we have a way to check which reports people are using for which events, um, which is usually a good starting point to see at least what people are using today. Um, you can also send out like an internal survey if you know sort of which teams are using Mixpanel, get an understanding for what events they want. Um, but depending on how many events you have versus where your new spec doc is, I th we, we kind of see it both ways. Some people can just delete current events from their project or some people just start over with a whole new project. Um, I typically think starting a new project once you've kind of reached that point is the easier way to go since you know it's clean and and you'll have you know everything right from the start, and won't we'll get down the road and find something that you might not have got you know might not have come up through the the reimplementation process. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, a good starting point. Any other question? Yeah, hello. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, we are using Google Analytics, and um, probably many people have asked you the same question. What is the difference between Google Analytics and Mixpanel? Uh, why should I change from Google Analytics? And if I do so, how can I persuade to have the budget to do it? Great question. <laughs> um, so Google Analytics is a marketing tool. So it's really built around session-based events where you're tracking how long a user is on your page. Doesn't really give us a lot of information about what they're doing on the page. Um, and then also, you know, just page views in general. Mixpanel is built to be action-focused. So you're actually tracking specific events that users are doing, and you can track the exact funnel that you want. Um, the budget piece is interesting depending on how your company is structured, but what I've seen work the best is to get buy-in from multiple teams so that you have product, marketing, if you have an analytics team, they can kind of all be on the same page and you can use budget from various teams instead of it coming from one department. Um, 
but really you, you want to align your company as a whole to understand that data is cross-organization uh, important. And that's another thing with Mixpanel, it's, it's meant to be democratized. So anybody can log into Mixpanel, pull their own report, and understand exactly what they're looking at. GA, you need a little bit more of training on knowing how to build funnels, for example, that you, you know, I think you have to wait a couple weeks for the data to even populate. Mixpanel, it's retroactive, so you can see it right away. Um, so I think showcasing that value across the leaders at your team and, and sort of aligning on using one tool that's the single source across product marketing any team is, is the best way to, to do that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think it, um, you always need to have in mind that you need to look for the right fit for the right person. So we're not just selling here Mixpanel and Mixpanel is the analytics solution that you should have. Uh, if Google Analytics is working for you, then that's definitely the best tool for you. Um, I would just consider the kind of metrics that you can get out of uh, Google Analytics right now and what you could possibly get if you move, for example, to a mixed panel implementation. Uh, the ways in which we differ, Jenna also uh, covers some of them. I also like to think that um, in Google Analytics, it's more like a one-way street where you have an influx of information into Google Analytics and then you report based on it. Uh, on Mixpanel, we have both importing data and exporting data. You have re-engagement with the user, so tracking data is one part of the equation, but you also have campaigns that can actually go out based on the behavior that the users had. So you had um, notifications that can go out based on it, and you also have, for example, webhooks that can interact with your own product when uh, the user has gone or has not gone through a specific funnel. So I like to think it more as a two-way street where you can have data coming in and data going out than just simply, in this case, Google Analytics, where you have just an influx of data and then you review the data there. Yeah, the messaging piece is another big differentiator. Google doesn't have that, and Mixpanel has email, push, in-app, uh, webhooks, and... Yeah. A-B testing. Yeah. Hey, thank you for the presentation. So um, you were also speaking about um, identity management. And um, well, I have a very specific question regarding that. Um, you, you were talking about uh, tracking users uh, from different platforms. Um, I wanted to know what do you recommend, whether to use, uh, or if that's doable, to use the, um, different, you know, a, a very specific attribute to identify a specific users in different platforms, or is the same profile that is assigned to that user? So do you mean whether you have like a profile for each user for each platform versus having a single profile across all of the devices? Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. Um, now, usually what, you, what we end up encouraging customers to have is to have a single profile for, uh, for a user across all of the devices. And the reason is uh, I was talking about the funnel itself and whether, uh, for example, the user ended up buying through or viewing articles through the website itself but was mo most comfortable having the purchase itself on the phone. It's usually actually the other way around. You usually are more comfortable with browsing stuff on your phone for what for whatever reason you end up buying your laptop, perhaps. Um, so having this, all of the user's history in a single profile is usually um, more useful to you when you're trying to analyze whether the users are being retained and whether you're getting them to the end point that you have. Uh, sometimes it does have its um, challenges because, for example, when you're sending an email, the act of sending the email itself or the act of opening that email, sometimes there's not business logic running in that. And by the, what I mean by that is that in the email client itself, in Gmail, you cannot run code to actually see who that person was or where he was coming from and so on. So you need to see whether, for example, in the act of um, sending the email itself, you track the event before you send the email and then um, include links in that email. So when that person opens a link, if it's, for example, in an incognito window, in the link itself, you have the identity of a person when it lands and you can identify with it. So it's just like having identity management in the back of your head when you're designing the process that the user is gonna go through. Yeah, and just to build on that, you can have a property on the user profile um, for each event, what device they were on. So you could differentiate it out through properties. 
Bueno, no va a haber más preguntas, ¿vale? Porque tenemos que seguir. Thank you very much for joining us. It was a pleasure. I love mixed panel. Thank you.